as you know, the Final Four is so huge, it's almost like a championship in and of itself. So it's like reaching that, right? So here you are. Is there some kind of, and the only word I can think of is relaxation, it may not be the right word, to the team in that you've made it here, now let's just let loose, let's play like we play, you know, let the chips fall where they may kind of thing, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of that, especially somebody showed me where the, um, was it the fourth largest uh, point spread going in the Final Four in history. So, you know, nobody's going to pick us to win. You know, kind of playing with house money a little bit, if you will. But, you know, our guys, we weren't supposed to beat Clemson. We were supposed to beat North Carolina. A lot of people were picking against us because Grand Canyon. I mean, and I get it. Like, our defense hasn't been good all year. You know, you need a good defense to win in the postseason. But I think if you go run the numbers on our four games, if you take out from the time we got up 31 on Charleston, just take those minutes out because our guys relaxed a little bit as with human nature will allow you to do when you're up 31. I'm not saying it's right, and I wish we had, and I wish we had done a better job closing that game against Charleston. But if you take out the time from when we got up 31 on them and look at the rest of the minutes in this tournament, uh, our defense has been pretty good. Not UConn's level good, but pretty good. So, you know, if you take a top three offense, and when we were healthy, we had number one offense for a majority of the year, and put it together with a top 20 or 30 defense, you'd be pretty good. So, you know, I, we're not going to be picked to win, I know that, but sometimes, you know, the best, best team, the one that's picked, doesn't always win. So if we, we were an underdog against Carolina, not as big as we are now, but but we figured out a way to win. So I don't think our guys are going to relax to the point where they're not going to play hard and be ready to play. I think we, we, we played hard like these last four games. We're going to go in playing as hard as we can, but there's not going to be a ton of pressure on us. Like we made the school's first Final Four, you know, we're going to enjoy the fact that we're there, that there's only four teams left playing the entire world basketball world I and mean, this isn't just the u.s watching this this is all basketball across the globe watching the final four they're all gonna like it's great but you're there you, we're, we're gonna try to win every game we play we try to win it so we're gonna we're gonna give them a scout report that we think can work now there's been a lot of really good scout reports that, that went into the game that didn't look so good after the game but but we're gonna, we're gonna put one together that i think is gonna be good and our guys are going to play hard. They're going to give it what they got, and we're going to we're going to try to win the game. Obviously, but they're, they're good. So I, I don't know that there's going to be a relaxation, but there's going to be a like we should be playing nervous. We should be playing free, hard, max effort, but with some confidence, knowing that we've got here, but also a little bit of freedom, if you will. Family and, and on this stage, what does that mean to you? I mean. It's, Super cool, actually. Like, you know, I recruited my kid, uh, EC Matthews, back. EC was really good guy, top of the guard in the country uh, my last year. I know he was a senior, and you know, Danny Preston was the lead recruiter on EC, and then at Rhode Island under the previous coach. And then Danny gets the job, retains Preston. Danny starts to recruit him along with Preston. Bobby comes in on some visits. They're trying to sell EC to be a point guard. I think Bobby's arguably the best point guard to ever play college basketball. And so great selling points. I get to know Bobby through that. I get to know Danny really well through the recruitment. Bobby gets the head job. You know, Bobby had been in, saw so me work as a high school coach. They got a lot of respect for high school coaches, the two of them with their dad being an all-fame coach. And, Bobby gives me a chance, and uh, shoot, it was good for both of us. We win big. He gets the Arizona State job, and he's still there, which to be someplace for nine years, you know, it's good. And he's doing what's it's ironic. It's in Phoenix right there with his brother. You know, I, I don't know that we'll be breaking bread Friday night with uh, me, Bobby, and Danny, but it is kind of cool that we're playing each other in the uh, Final Four in Bobby's hometown, current hometown now. Uh, you know, I... Danny's one of the guys I talked to a lot during the year. He's obviously really good. We both have a high school background. 
We've both known each other for a long time. Uh, I probably won't be asking him his advice on how to handle uh, uh, the week of the Final Four since he's done a pretty good job at last year and done a pretty good job so far. But, you know, it's look, we're both going to get our teams ready to play. We're going to be super competitive. I'm sure he's going to be on the refs. Uh, as usual, I uh, might be a little bit uh, as well. We'll both coach the game super intense, and then, you know, whoever wins at the end, we'll, we'll bug it out and uh, cheer for the other one in the uh, final and be friends again after the game. But yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I did talk to him for a little bit yesterday. He's He's been great. I mean, we had a similar situation my, my uh, last year at Buffalo when I played Bobby in a tournament, which, you know, that year was my boss, it was a little different. But yeah, so this is the second time I played one of the Hurley brothers in the uh, NCAA tournament. This one's on a little bit bigger stage. So tons of respect for those guys. Got, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for either one. Like, you know, Danny brought Bobby, got him in, Bobby brought me, Bobby's a mentor of mine, as is Danny, and so it, it is super cool that I'm playing against him. I just, I wish his team wasn't so good that I was playing against, but yeah, it, it's cool family and, and on this stage, what does that mean to you? I mean, it's super cool, actually. Like, you know, you're recruiting my kid, uh, E.C. Matthews back. E.C. was really good guy, top of the guard in the country uh, my last year. I know he was a senior, and, you know, Danny Preston was the lead recruiter on E.C. and then at Rhode Island under the previous coach. And then, Danny gets the job, retains Preston. Danny starts to recruit him along with Preston. Bobby comes in on some visits. They're trying to sell EC to be a point guard. And Bobby's arguably the best point guard to ever play college basketball. And so, great selling points. I get to know Bobby through that. I get to know Danny really well through the recruitment. Bobby gets the head job. You know, Bobby had been in, saw me work as a high school coach. They got a lot of respect for high school coaches, the two of them with their dad being an Hall of Fame coach. And Bobby gives me a chance, and uh, shoot, it was good for both of us. We went big, he gets the Arizona State job, and he's still there, which to be someplace for nine years, you know, uh, it's good. He's doing what's in. It's ironic, it's in Phoenix, right there with his brother. You know, I, I don't know that we'll be breaking bread Friday night with uh, me, Bobby, and Danny, but. It is kind of cool that we're playing each other in the uh, Final Four in Bobby's hometown, current hometown now. Um, you know, I, Danny's one of the guys I talk to a lot during the year. He's obviously really good. We both have a high school background. We both know each other for a long time. Uh, I probably won't be asking him his advice on how to handle uh, uh, the week of the Final Four since he's done a pretty good job at last year and done a pretty good job so far. But, you know, it's... Look, we're both going to get our teams ready to play. We're going to be super competitive. I'm sure he's going to be on the refs. Uh, as usual, I uh, might be a little bit uh, as well. We'll both coach the game super intense. And then, you know, whoever wins at the end, we'll, we'll bug it out and uh, cheer for the other one in the uh, final and be friends again after the game. But yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I did talk to him for a little bit yesterday. He's He's been great. I mean, we had a similar situation my, my uh, last year at Buffalo when I played Bobby in a tournament, which, you know, that year was my boss. It was a little different. But, yeah, so this is the second time I played one of the Hurley brothers in the uh, NCAA tournament. This one's on a little bit bigger stage. So tons of respect for those guys. That got, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for either one. Like, you know, Danny brought Bobby, got him in. Bobby brought me. Bobby's a mentor of mine, as is Danny. And so it, it is super cool that I'm playing against him. I just... I wish his team wasn't so good that I was playing against, but yeah, it, it's cool. What is that like experience for things like that? Yeah, uh, they're like a physical team, um, but they're solid all around. So, I mean, obviously we got to really lock in the scouting report. And then, I mean, going against Irwin every day, I mean, 2002 SEC Player of the Year is pretty good. So, I mean, it gives us a look for, for bigs like, like Clean. And, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just a good look every day of practice. That's how I run the deck. Yeah, question for Sam Brown. Uh, what's the thing out about their their uh, backcourt and some of the guys they have there? Uh, obviously, their guards are really dynamic. They can uh, score at three levels, and they're they're pretty talented with with Newton and uh, Spencer. Um, but I, I think that uh, we're going to put together a good game plan to hopefully stop those guys. Cross side, Tony.
I was just asking Coach, you know, you guys are one of the biggest underdogs in the last 50 years. You guys have a, a chip on your shoulder as being a number four seed and still getting an 11.5 uh, line against you. Um, I don't really want to play this way. Nah, I don't want to, I don't really like, we just got to go out and play the game. I'm like, not really worried about any spurs and numbers and stuff. Back left of the room, Sean. This is for Ron and Sam both. What, what makes him, I mean, you see Mark tears and games, you see him in practice. What makes him so hard to stop? Because a lot of people key on him and they still can't stop him. Um, he's pretty fast, you know, he can finish at the rim, he's strong. And he can shoot, so he's a three-level type scorer, um, and he's explosive. So that's probably what makes him hard to guard. Uh, I think that, uh, like you said, he's a really good shooter, and also uh, he's really experienced. Like he's been playing college basketball uh, for four years, he's a senior. So like it's really uh, hard to stop a guy that's like been to the fire. He's really, he's really talented. Over on Katie. Ryan, I know you said you don't really look at the spread, but for any of y'all, how do you feel like y'all have kind of leaned into or maybe embraced the underdog role at different points throughout this tournament so far and then again going into this game? Great, right, awesome. Um, I mean, I think we've been underdogs a lot of the year when people have really doubted us, especially going into the, the, the March Madness. Uh, so, I mean, it, it kind of gives us extra motivation to go out there and, and uh, try to prove people wrong. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it just gives us motivation, you know, it gives us another thing to, to work for. This question's for Ryland. So you've made a lot of like uh, wrestling references over the past few weeks. And I wanted to ask you, like, if you guys beat UConn, what would you compare that to as far as like a wrestling moment? Um, I would have to say, uh, probably like, I think Ultimate Warrior beat Hulk Hogan, like Hulk Hogan was big dog, like he was like the, the, the highest big time dude, like you know, around the WWF at the time. And Ultimate Warrior came in with a bunch of energy and beat him. And he got the belt, he got the championship. Hulk Hogan was, uh, he was just laying down on the floor, like hurt and stuff. So I would say that cause Hulk Hogan's like in the GOAT conversation for WWF and UConn, they're a really, really good team like that. They're like the Hulk Hogan of college basketball right now. So, you know, Ultimate Warrior came in there and beat them. So I would say it's like that. All right, two more questions. Coach Oates alluded to how big this stage is that you guys will be playing on, and how all around the world people will be tuning in to watch your team. What do you want them to know about Alabama basketball? Uh, I think that we're a tough team. Um, we're we're uh, obviously very competitive, and I think that we're a, a really good defensive team as well. Um, especially, I feel like we've been showing that the last couple of games. So I think that I just want to show. I think all of us want to show that we're tough and we can. Uh, we're the, one of the best teams in the country. Last question back over there. This is for all you guys. What role does the fan play? I did the story yesterday about the packages to get to Arizona selling out. A lot of fans are going to be showing up. Is that important to you? And does it affect your play when you got a lot of support in the stands? Uh, yeah, I feel like they like it's important just to show the love, but um, you know we appreciate them and yeah they give us energy and they like they help us win games of course, but like I said like with the Grand Canyon stuff like at the end of the day they can show up all they want we still have to go on the court and execute like like yeah we appreciate them like we know they're there for us we know they love us but at the end of the day they can't play the game for us so yeah they give us a bunch of energy. But we got to be able to use the fans and be able to display something on the court because of the fans. Like, they can't come out there and play for us as much as they probably want to. So uh, I really appreciate them, but we got to do what we got to do on the court, too.